hello and welcome to another video on making home better this one goes back to before I started sharing my projects on this channel so I apologize in advance for a mostly image based video this coffee table is not a very difficult project and there is a very good video from Michael Bills that I followed to make this one it's a very informative video that is entertaining to watch on his channel he also has another video about how to finish concrete using different methods this was also helpful. I will leave a link to these videos and all the materials I use for the build in the description. I plan on sharing more of my projects and findings on this channel, so please subscribe and like if you are interested. For me at least, when doing these projects, time is usually what's on short supply. So this project actually took about six months to complete, only because I took almost a six month break in between. It can easily be completed over a couple of weekends otherwise. Let's go ahead and get started and take a look at the journey. One of the goals of this coffee table was to make it a memorable piece. Something that in addition to serving its purpose as a coffee table, also becomes something that the family wants to keep around for a long time. This is why the Michael Builds video was perfect inspiration. It goes into how you can create a personalized design etched into the concrete. For the design, I went with a row of text and hand imprints of the family. A way to capture the current moment in time of our kids relative to my wife and I. The letters I printed onto a piece of paper from Microsoft Word and the hand prints were traced on similar printing paper. I covered this in packing tape to give it some rigidity and from there, using an X-Acto knife, I carefully carved out the design. It was a tedious task, but not a hard one. The mold for the concrete top is fairly simple. Using melamine, I created a template that was 2 inches deep and secured it with screws. I made the slab extra thick to give it a beefier look, but this made the table very very heavy. I'm not going into exact dimensions that I used since this will be specific to your design. To seal the joints I used silicone caulking but I did a horrible job with it and took a lot of effort to clean up. For my next build I plan on following a tip I saw on the Modustrial Maker YouTube channel of using a fondant tool. This seems to make the process simpler. To help the concrete separate from the mold I also did a light coating of WD-40 on the entire mold. From there, using the stencil, I very carefully added dry sanded tile grout to capture the design on the mold. With the mold all prepared, it was time to pour concrete. I laid out some plastic on the floor and raised and leveled the mold on some plastic buckets. The concrete I used is the Rapid Set Mortar Mix. This is a little pricier than others but is of higher strength and cures quickly without the need of any rebar. With the help of a mixer attachment for my drill, I mixed up batches of concrete in a bucket using the recommended water to concrete mix from the bag. Before pouring the concrete mixer into the mold, a bag of Rapid Set Flow Control needs to be mixed in with the concrete. This immediately makes the concrete more liquidy and makes the pour and level in the mold much easier. I was a bit nervous about the concrete setting too fast, so I rushed through the process a bit and poured the mixture into the mold a little too fast. Once the concrete was all cured and I flipped over the slab, I noticed that my design had shifted and caused a ripple effect. The only explanation for this I could come up with was that I poured the concrete into the mold too fast. Because of this, I actually ended up having to go through the process a second time and make a second slab. Once the concrete is in the mold, I lightly tapped the sides of the mold with a hammer to get rid of any air bubbles and also screeded the top using a 2x4 lightly to somewhat level the bottom of the slab. As the concrete is drying, be sure to wet the slab with a small sprayer to slow down the curing process. The second slab turned out much better and captured my design well.
The slab of concrete sat in my garage for several months before I got around to sealing it. Once again, Michael Bills has a good video on different sealing options that's good to watch to figure out what is the right approach for you. I will leave a link to this and all other materials I used in the build in the description. For this project, I decided to go the epoxy route because I liked the look of it for a coffee table and I felt it would cover the small cavities of the imprinted design in the concrete better. The glaze coat product had good reviews and was easily available on Amazon, so I went with this option. The application process was fairly simple following the instructions on the box and I applied it using a plastic spreader. I also used a heat gun to go lightly over the port epoxy to get the air bubbles out. This got rid of most of the air bubbles except for over the designs, which still had some remaining. If I were to do it over again, I probably will use a brush to brush in the epoxy in these areas before putting the top coat on. I didn't mind this so much, however, as it just adds to the character and story of the coffee table. With the coffee table top being all ready to go, it was time to put together a simple base made out of wood. I chose poplar since I planned on staining it anyway, and relatively speaking, poplar is cheap compared to many other species of wood. I had bought some 2x10 poplar stock from our local lumber yard for a previous project. I had enough left over from this to make the four legs by gluing up two pieces to create a 3.5 square leg and the necessary apron and side stretcher pieces for the table. I started off by ripping the 2x10 poplar in 1 and 3 quarter inch strips. I glued two of these pieces to make the 3.5 inch square leg. I don't yet have a joiner, a planer, or a drum sander, so it took a lot of sanding with my orbital sander to make a smooth surface. I started with 60 grit and worked all the way up to 120 and then 240 to get a consistent finish. Once sanding was complete, I trimmed the legs into its final dimension of 16 inch tall and added a small chamfer to the bottom of each leg to prevent any chipping when the coffee table is moved around. For the apron and stretcher pieces, I used the 1 and 3 quarter inch strip of poplar and attached them to the legs using pocket holes. I also added a bottom shelf to the coffee table by running a 3 quarter inch poplar piece across the bottom stretcher piece and attached it with glue. This is going in our basement sitting area and previously we had a local company custom mix a stain to match some cabinets in the basement for a different project. I used the same stain on the coffee table to get a consistent finish in the basement. I also applied three coats of polyurethane to protect the table. To attach the concrete top to the table, I just used construction adhesive. All in all, I am very happy with the project and certainly have a conversation piece which I'm sure we will enjoy for a long time. Thank you very much for watching and if you are interested in more such projects, please subscribe to the Making Home Better channel by hitting the subscribe button below the video. Until next time, take care.